We could push this pretty far back. Mm -hmm. And if we had a gathering space that looked something like this, yeah. this could even be its own little nook. But then I guess I'm omitting the fire pit now. We still have room for a fire pit, even behind that, like there's so much space, but yeah. maybe even we don't even bother and we just have like a propane coffee table fire pit. To me, that's so romantic with the pool and the twinkle lights and the sectional mm -hmm. and like a coffee table fire pit. That yeah. is giving a glass of red wine. It is giving, yes. I love that. Yeah, I think that feels really good. And I always like to fill out the dead corners of yards that might not be used by people that much. I love making those the lush wildlife habitat spaces. Mm -hmm. So if by doing this and pulling it away from the corner a bit, we have room for more dense planting back here that yeah. just provides some of that habitat Amazing. and just a backdrop. I think that would be nice to screen that blank part of the wall we were just looking at too, because there's like hedge, wall, hedge. We could fill in the center with some hedge-like shrub habit. It is English ivy. Oh, it is. My mortal enemy, but it's not their property. It's not their building. I think they technically, nobody would care if they tried to eradicate it. But at this point, it's an ugly wall and the ivy is going to be less ugly. So I'm not fighting them about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look bad. It's no. unfortunate. That, yeah, from that photo, I couldn't tell if it was like freestanding hedges in front of it. But no. it's ivy growing on the ivy building. Ivy growing on the building. They're going to get ivy in other places every single time that that fruits, unfortunately, because birds will eat it and take it places. So yeah. I'm not thrilled about its presence, but the battle that they would have to wage to get rid of it is asking a lot of somebody. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we can play off of it for now and maybe by planting this area out a bit more it might I don't know if anything can out compete ivy to like prevent oh, no it won't no it won't yeah. out compete ivy but we can ignore it for now what are we gonna do what are we gonna do yeah so I agree I want to see the trees the dense shrubs you're totally on the nose about just like using those back corners you can fill in eight feet ten feet twelve feet and still not feel like you're taking up space because it's just yeah. creating that coziness that they're gonna yeah. want anyway Exactly. And that's almost extending this wall of the railing here. So we'd have like some sort of path coming through and then dense shrubs would continue the illusion of that wall around the edge. Mm -hmm. I love um, that. Yeah, I really like that too. Then let's just leave cool. the entire space south of the railing as flex space. I think they talked about maybe wanting to do like a storage shed then they could access from the RV pad. Yeah. So, you know, because that would be great if they had a boat to be able to have stuff for the boat in this shed and then be able to park the boat there and then unload the stuff and then be done. Yeah, that would be perfect. We could add that as a note in the concept. Just maybe we show some trees there, but say this could also be yeah. an area where your storage could go. I think the trees where you have them is perfect. And then it would not be a large shed that fills up. It would be like just a small shed kind of exactly where you've notated it to be. Okay. Like a six by six or something. Do you think it's worth drawing that in just to show how it fits or yeah. should we keep that yeah. just as a note? Let's right. draw it in just to make sure that there's room for people to get around it. There's room for... Might make sense like in oh. here actually. I don't know if it necessarily matters because it's either up against this building or it's up against this building. So yeah. whatever flow of traffic feels right to you, I think it's fine. Okay. I'm kind of a fan of pushing it away from the house. It might just feel good to have the path closer to the house, like through here and then the shed could be in here. And then that's probably right there where you've started. So basically the edge of, this, of the shed to the east of the shed, it's going to be concrete the entire length of that house is going to be concrete because that's a parking pad. So awesome. Cool. I think that corner feels good. Do you want to talk about the vegetable garden? Yes, I do. Yes, I sure do. Me too. Okay. Oh what happened? No. I don't know. I kicked something and it made a louder noise than I was expecting. <laughs> Drama. All good. <laughs> If anybody hears this like kind of sad whining noise, my dog is acting as if I've never given her love and affection in her entire life. So just FYI. Poor her thing. Being dramatic. <laughs> so I love the idea of the vegetable garden having an entrance from the main backyard and an entrance from the side yard, but feeling okay. like a place that you enter and exit. Similar to how we did for grill, I think. We 
would be a good. Yeah. Okay. Is then to me, like, especially on that North side yard, it's that super shady. They've just walked through the food forest, got this sort of fairy tale magic experience. And now they're entering a garden. Like maybe there's an arbor, mm. there's something growing over it. It's just very, very cottage core and magical. Maybe both sides have a gate and it doesn't need to be fenced off, but like an arbor or some sort of entry point to go into the garden. Love that. And then because the trees are on the north side, they really don't affect the sunlight at all. So that whole area is pretty full sun. You're awesome. getting that southern aspect just going in diagonally at it. So no need to stress about like the garden box placement that can fill out that entire space. How big are we talking here? Like this whole corner? Yeah. Are they pretty big gardeners? I think they want to be. Yeah. And why not? Love that. I'm thinking about this edge of the pergola and how I want that to feel. Perennials um, is what I Let me think about the flow here. So you're going to come off the deck in here. If somebody wants to pop into the garden, they can either go somewhere through here and up or somewhere through here and up. I'm just mapping that out so I can say like I can block off these areas with planters. Maybe a flagstone stepper here and there if they need to step through. I agree. I'd say on each of those two sides, there should be one three foot gap yeah for somebody to be able to just move through without having to totally change their direction yeah okay so maybe one like in here yeah and one i think maybe this corner makes sense so there's yeah. two sides of it that are yeah. open cool yeah. like that and tree okay let's think about the flow here so th if this is a big tree mm -hmm. somewhere big ass tree um, <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be really cool it's kind of like a a focal point actually because like walking through this trellis you're gonna see mm -hmm. a trellis with climbing vines mm -hmm. and behind it you're gonna see this beautiful trunk of a super mature tree and from yeah. both directions you're gonna get that effect that'll be really cool got it and it's math Massive, massive. Can you share your screen so I can see it? I sure can. It's winter when I took this photo. It looks much prettier in real life. Ooh. When it's summer, it's massive looking. But again, you can see it's even kind of leaning away. So it's not going to create any sort of shade situation for the garden. You can literally see where the grass is not growing is a great indicator of where it is super full sun and super hot. Okay, and yeah. that's why we want to use this space as like garden space. In general, excuse me. <laughs> you, like, have you received love and affection before? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you can see cool. here, like this is where it's been impossible to get anything to grow in front of the tree as well, because it's just so hot there. Yeah, so very okay. hot. So I'm gonna that... map out those areas. Okay, that's super helpful. All garden, all garden. It was like all the way to the edge of the house there too. I was even thinking like we could do the entrance, we could line it up with the house, the entrance to this garden. Like it could yeah. be really in line with this edge. Really do get that sort of gate feeling because this blocks mm -hmm. it, the fence blocks it, and then an arbor or something. With yeah, some I really shrubs like on that. either side, some shrubs or something would really just fill that. Yeah, that would be really cool because that walkway would just become like this garden corridor alley mm -hmm. of plants on either side. Yeah, you and can then open up towards the back of the back. I also like that too because it's not like shoving the garden in a corner. I know for the other project we did that just because that's how their existing garden was and that's how the configuration of the space mm -hmm. worked out. But for this one, I'd really love it to be the garden is here and it's its own space and it, it takes up yeah. the space that it wants to take up. It's not a small of a rectangle or square that we can get it in the corner. I think that would be so great. Like looking at this picture of the side yard, if we had a shrub here and a shrub here, and then the arbor centered between the two, it's really going to yeah. feel like you're walking into a magical place. That's amazing. That's going to look so good. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I mapped that out there and then this would be the corridor. There would be some sort of walkway through here mm -hmm. with either raised beds or in-ground beds on either side. Let's do on the yeah. north side side let's do like a perennial edge around everything okay because that is also like there will be just a little more shade the more directly under the canopy of those trees you get okay so like two or three feet here as an edger garden beds this is getting sloppier by the second but that's okay are you kidding me this is incredible <laughs> Like they're going from having a big blank nothing to having a yard and there's so much. It's so functional. I'm so excited to see it. Yeah, me too. This is awesome. We 
we can have an opening here for that path to connect to the primary garden path. Yes. Back here filling with some edible large shrubs. Uh -huh. Taking advantage of that sunlight. And then I think here. right on, on either side of the southern entrance by the lawn yeah. is another great spot for like two big beds. Yeah. Maybe do four because then you can walk between them from the pergola area. So like square beds. So you mean in here? Oh, okay. I um... Maybe we need to push the entrance a little more south because I love when you walk into a garden and then you're walking between two vegetable beds. Like you're walking down a path and you've got a veggie mm -hmm. bed on one side and veggie bed on the other. Yeah. So if you push that down a little bit, then you could basically do four square beds and still have space to go from the, per the, the pergola exit straight through the middle of that. Okay, I see what you mean. So this would be the pergola exit here and there would be beds on either side. Yeah. And that could even continue we could do one more here exactly. just to keep that edge going. Look how and cool that one. looks. We all adjust those shrub sizes too. The garden takes precedence here. Yeah. I think that's really nice. And actually, I probably made that too wide even. Looking at how big this path is, these could probably squeeze in a little bit. You just need four feet each direction. Something like that. That's so cute. Are you kidding me? Um, I think that's good. It's actually not creating this huge garden that they might be overwhelmed to try to fill if they're not super avid gardeners, but we have some larger beds. We can also fill it in back in this area. I, the yellow is where I was sketching out where the direct sun was showing up in that image. So we could have maybe- If they didn't want beds, beds, beds all the way through the garden, we could fill this in with some edible perennials or shrubs that yeah. are still part of the garden, but they're softer edges than a planter. I like that, like herb. It would be mm -hmm. great to have all the rosemary all the time, just filling out the bottom part of a landscaping bed and maybe we get a service berry and some golden currants in that space. In yeah. the back corner. I like the idea of this path going right up to the base of that tree too. I mean, still giving enough space so you're not like digging out for paving, whatever we yeah. do there. Just with that being a focal point, it's like, I could see even the kids wanting to just run through this path and go sit under the tree mm -hmm. and the path takes you right up to it. I like the look of that. I want to do a cute little water feature as a focal point with the tree. Okay, what yeah. What do you think? Yeah, what kind of water feature are you thinking? Nothing crazy built in and cost prohibitive like a solar fountain, like a DIY project, but mm. something that bubbles and provides some pollinator support. This path open up right in this corner. What if the water feature was like in the middle and the yeah. path went on either side? So it just yep. feels like a little cottage yep. garden. No. Yep. And then it becomes a visual focal point from both directions. It would be so amazing from both entering from the side yard and entering from the backyard to see the focal point at the end of both spots. Yeah. Look at how the tree leans and art. Mm -hmm. And so right in there, I think would be a really great spot to put a focal point and then center the pathway that we walk on either just on this focal point or on like the tree plus that is what it can be centered on whatever you think is best. I guess that's a good point. The way I have it drawn, it's kind of in line with the tree, maybe slightly to the right about where you were pointing. And that would make it so when you're walking through either of the trellises, the entryways on either side, you would see them next to each other. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like tree water feature. And I think that would work really well, that I alignment. Think I think so. I'm in full agreement. Now that I'm looking at this again, how do you feel about a nice big evergreen in that corner? Oh, I would love. That's kind of a backdrop. I would love. Baby blue Colorado spruce, eight foot diameter on that. Mm -hmm. That's like 25 feet tall. I love filling in corners like that. <laughs> I think that would be a really good a really good spot to do that. I'm not afraid of it at all to like just push as far back from the edge as we can because fence lines are awkward and yeah. why have them we can cover them i'm totally with you baby blue spruce there would get like 25 feet tall wouldn't shade the garden because it's on the north side and would generally just be lovely yeah i think that would look really nice and it would bounce since that tree is kind of leaning i feel like a very lush evergreen to the left would balance out that view if that makes sense so yeah. we got one leaning and kind of scraggly looking to one side i think the blue spruce is perfect because it'll have that color contrast as well and with yeah. the garden in the foreground i think that would just be 
a nice layering. You'd have trellis on your left from this view, pergola to the right. The pergola might actually be a little bit in front of the tree view looking at it now, which is, is fine, I think. From um, here, that's totally fine. I, when you go down and then enter the garden, you'll still have that focal point. Yeah. And even like standing at the very corner of that deck, you'll see pergola, tree, scraggly, sideways tree, evergreen, trellis. And then in the foreground, you'd have water feature, plant beds. I would not be afraid at all to this entire section right here where we've got the blue spruce maybe here, but even here, I am very happy to obscure these kinds of sight lines of just these other houses for them, mm -hmm. giving them that privacy. And also it would just create Western evening shade, which is when things get too hot here anyway. Yeah. Even in evergreen, anything deciduous, the stuff here is going to get enough sun from the early afternoon to seven o'clock that providing that relief from the hottest heat of the day is going to be good for the vegetables, not bad for the vegetables. That is not an yeah. applicable sentence to most parts of the United States, but in Utah, that is very, very real. Definitely. That's a great idea. I think that's where my head was at, but I didn't realize why I liked the idea of having a spruce there, but it's mm -hmm. like those sight lines. It would be really nice because you see the larger evergreen trees on the left. Mm -hmm. And if we filled in that view to obstruct where the building is and where those, whatever those posts are on the right, mm -hmm. we could just fill in that. So it, once these trees mature, you'd have just like greenery, the yeah. foreground in the yard greenery, and then kind of lining up yeah. where those larger trees are in the background as well. Yeah, that's so good. That works really well. That's so good. Cool. Okay, I'm very happy with that. It's all yours to take over again, the screen if you want. Oh, this looks so yeah. good. I like this. I think there's still a little bit of wiggle room with where exactly this area falls. If we wanted to scooch it down, there's room to make this lawn a little longer. I think there's room to move the garden entrance even back north where it originally oh. was because we can shift this path and we could have that trellis be in line. There's a little bit of room to move things around to make this lawn a bit longer. And I was also thinking this area here could probably move down a bit. That's what I, I thought. I think there's a way to rework it if it is in line with that yeah. this line here. I think that's fine. And that just buys us a little more room because we were originally going for like a very long mm -hmm. dog run area. So there are options to open that back up a little bit. I um, think yes. I think let's open it up a little bit, but this is still not nothing as far as the amount of square footage of lawn. Mm -hmm. So like the yard is shockingly large, actually. Yeah, it really is. I'm going to do a little measurement for myself here. So if this is 20 feet. Look at you. Look at you. This is how I just test myself as I'm sketching. <laughs> yeah, I'm thrilled with that. So that's almost 20 feet wide and Which probably almost 60 feet long. Maybe not 60. 50? 50, maybe, yeah. I mean, definitely 40 at that point. It yeah. seems like if we kept the seating area exactly where it was, it would be like a 40-foot lawn. Yeah. Which 20 by 40 does not sound bad to me. That sounds amazing to me. How does it sound to you? It sounds good. I'm just envisioning like throwing a ball for a dog. <laughs> How okay. far? I think 40 is comfortable. I think it's just, it also depends probably on what kinds of dogs they have. If they have like huge dogs that run like crazy, maybe 60 is more appropriate. I think 40 is fine. I, up to 50, you can play with it. The thing that I then confused you about was because I had thought you were talking about this southern seating area and moving it down. And I see. And the reason you had originally placed it above the staircase to the basement there was so that the basement would have a sense of separation. But yeah. then I'm realizing that I don't hate the idea of the basement apartment or whatever's down there feeling like it has a patio. The same way that yeah. when you exit your house's dining room or your house's back door, you step out onto a patio. So I really yeah. don't hate the idea of just making that feel like that, where you exit your apartment and now you're on a patio. Yeah, no, I think someone like if if they were renting out to a stranger, I get why you would we would want our own privacy, but this would be like grandma, right? Yeah, so. I think that works well. This seat would not be blocking the entrance there, but otherwise, pretty much like that ish. Yeah. Maybe the one um, the other seat gone. That would be like the walkway between all of these spaces. Yeah, no, like maybe, this one here. I was thinking the other or, one. 
Okay. Um, pretty much sectional plus like one or two chairs and yeah you want that that feels good and I that even feels good. like if they do need to ra- like go this way and go back to the rv parking or yeah wherever. i don't want a chair right above that though because i want her to be able to exit the staircase and then turn right and go into the yard but like maybe so you're thinking more like, like love seat or something yeah exactly something like that yeah okay. that feels good and then these oh, can even like turn around these two chairs and if they wanted to like face the lawn if they the kids were running around on the lawn and they wanted a place to sit that kind of acts as a hangout space for both the open lawn play area and the pool area and the the everything's connecting it just feels so good you can sit on the sectional while someone's in the pool you could lay on the sun chairs you could be in the jacuzzi you could it's really good yeah and this view is going to be really nice too like mm-hmm. just up from this way we're going to have trees on this side some mm-hmm. perennial plantings against those really nice steps up to the deck pool and then it terminates at this truck or arbor up to this tree beyond and it's just going to have some really nice layers to it it's sure we're will. creating some cool views with this the opening that we're keeping on the upper deck you mentioned the foyer thing which i do agree you kind of need a space to land but that is also where i would want them to have their grill i saw that they have a traeger so this is a thing they smoke things they grill things so having this north side of the deck be relatively open, but still have room for the Traeger in the grill, I think would be important. Is there an yeah. space for that? I think so. Because we have these seats that I drew in for the hot tub are maybe not even real. They might not want that, but there's yeah, room for that. They don't even need um, it. They've got so many seats elsewhere. Yeah. Usually if you're sitting by a hot tub, you're sitting on the edge of the hot tub with your feet in it. So yeah. I don't think that would be necessary. But if we had hot tub doors opening up, I think this corner is really great in here mm-hmm. for grilling somebody's up on the deck grilling and they can and see straight down the back and forth love. Yeah. So good. I love that. That makes yeah. perfect functional sense to me to have it just be sort of a big corridor, but have the Traeger right there. There's flow, there's connection. I think it's great. As I'm refining this, I'll figure out what these beds look like exactly. I think like you said, it'd probably be more of an organic shape. So the back would be here and then maybe like going up to the lawn like this. And then the and lawn, this, can, that lawn can hit right up against that. This one might even just look like this. Would this be lawn, this section? here you think probably we not. About that. it feels inefficient to like water i would say it would probably just, just like exactly fill it in with a few and then instead of it looking like two separate complete landscaping beds it's really one and then oh yeah are mm-hmm. just the stepping stones that you walk on to get through it i'm gonna have to draw this all on one layer at some point so it's not just a jumbly it's perfect nightmare we can visualize it so so well so this walkway we haven't talked about surfacing under this section here since this area we're talking about all the same the surfacing decking. potentially yeah the decking then maybe this is just that soft surfacing that crusher fine i think so I think it could gorgeous. even line up here actually yeah i think that would be gorgeous to see the deck material butt up right against the crusher fines material i love the connected but separate spaces because of the hardscape change i think it's gorgeous we could have some planting accents back here if we want since this is all kind of a play space in this corner with the pool and the lawn it might just make sense i know we usually don't do lawn right up to paving edges but this corner makes it easy to irrigate we could have some accent plantings here to kind of soften that edge but i think it does make sense to have kids be able to run right from the pool into the lawn yeah let's do it because if we went with bio meadow then it's gonna be a much softer edge anyway i really hate bluegrass going right up against a hardscape because it's so high maintenance to have look neat but if it's yeah. a really floppy lush meadowy grass we can do that and just have the lawn connect straight to the hardscape there even this edge on this side would be pretty soft it would be that where the meadow meets planting mm-hmm. yeah i think that's looking really nice so and this could oh i'm gonna let you finish your thought oh right. no i'm just thinking out loud i still really like the idea of this line of the pergola I being in it. line with this love and it. then this line of the house being in line with the front of this trellis it's scratching my brain in all the right ways <laughs> feels so good. good. On the west fence line where your scale currently is, we have existing aspen trees. So let's just fill it in with perennials and shrubs and like just a low maintenance border that plays with that cottagecore meets farmhouse aesthetic. 
There is also, just so you're aware, there is a pretty significant swale or drop off on the other side of those aspen trees right up to the fence line. It is a completely unusable amount of space. I can show you a picture of it just so okay. you know what I'm talking about. You can see the way that this fence dips down here and now all of a sudden oh, wow. there's like a four foot drop behind those trees. Water runs off and just goes that way. At this point, it feels like too big of a project to try to like do something permaculture-y there other yeah. than acknowledge the fact that we can plant low maintenance wildlife habitat supporting stuff back through there and it's going to get a ton of water every time it rains and just self-support. I don't want them to spend hundreds of dollars, definitely not thousands of dollars with like actually planting out that area so much as like are we just throwing some native grasses back there? Are we throwing wildflower seeds back there? Are we planting one tree that's going to just stabilize and fill that out? I don't want them to have to plant landscaping that they're not even going to see. It is just a really odd topographical thing where it just that dips. That is really strange. It just dips down there for some reason. Yeah, it, I think probably a seed mix would make the most sense. We could plant some more high water needs perennials back there or shrubs. Could do something like a golden current that'll kind of fill in over time. It's not easy it's to like, access. It's just, it's difficult. It's out of the way. I wouldn't mind planting some things like a couple of really big shrubs that are going to come up to here and just hide this fence all together. But I also would really honestly be very happy with seeing some shrubs planted right here. And now we're blocking the sight line up to eight, 10 feet above the aspen trunks. I'm trying to visualize where our seating area butts up to that large tree. Is it right up against it pretty much? So it I might actually fall really nicely in that corner between like where the lawn meets that southern seating area, possibly. I don't have that tree, that multi-stem, that big one on the left there on my plan. Just want to make sure we have enough space for what I drew. So we're seeing the staircase here. It's not an insignificant amount of space, that's for certain. This is definitely, this multi-stem is where that canopy extended in your photo. That's what we're looking yeah. at. It looks like it would be right behind where we would have that outdoor sofa. I think we're pretty much tucking the sectional right in under this multi-stem I think that's, that'll look really nice, but I'll make sure I have that on the plan. So I remember there's a tree yeah. there. It's easy to draw it in now, just seeing it's literally directly across from the staircase. Okay, that helps me map out where those large shrubs could go along that fence since it dips down. Mm -hmm. somewhere in between where those aspens are and that tree is where it drops so yeah. in that back area between those trees I will add some shrubs. The lawn that you've drawn in the 20 feet across I mean again six foot husband for scale this is not an insignificant amount of space so there is room to plant the shrubs here and still get that like 20 feet of lawn across yeah. and in fact we discussed this with the client and it's ideal because aspens really like to put up shoots mm -hmm. and right now they're mowing the the shoots and they're just in this existing lawn. So by pulling the lawn a little ways away, they can fight the aspens less. And it's okay if a couple more aspens volunteer in this existing foresty shrub bed, but there mm -hmm. will be fewer of them showing up in the lawn area. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. I imagine that edge is a very lush landscape screening style edge mm -hmm. where we have larger shrubs and the trees coming out of it. So if some aspen suckers come up and fill in more of that bed, then great, that's going to look yeah. fine. It's it going to be stunning. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. So that's not an issue. We can make yeah. space for the aspens to yeah. do what they want to do. Yeah, yes. that sounds great. The aspens themselves, it's phenomenal that they're thriving there. And the swale thing helps because the water all runs that direction. The problem that the client faces is the fact that if kids are running barefoot on the lawn, a mowed aspen volunteer is like a stick sticking right up in the grass, right? It's going to be impossible without removing and poisoning the aspens, which we're not going to do. It's going to be impossible to prevent that from happening always but by yeah. shrinking the size of the lawn the aspens put up the most volunteers within that eight feet from existing trees it's basically like instead of removing aspens from the humans habitat we're removing yeah. the humans from the aspens habitat <laughs> which is that's what sustainable landscaping is yeah. right yeah, yeah. Like, let's not you can run I... over here and then the aspens <laughs> can have that edge that they want yes. anyway yes. <laughs>
We're working with the nature. We're not fighting the nature. Yeah. That's the goal. Awesome. I do low-key want to see a hammock, though, now that I'm looking at this tree. Where is their space? Cool Are the aspens too weak? Probably. Yeah. yeah, they look pretty young still. I mean, it, you could do one side of a hammock on the tree and then stake the other side. That's true. And we don't need to design in a hammock. There are freestanding hammocks that and anybody who wants one can purchase one. It's fine. I'm yeah. overthinking. I'm all about the vibes, Kyra. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you do math and I do vibes. <laughs> The, um, the screen's all yours again. Okay, cool. Do you want to move to a different section? Because we haven't talked. We have the driveway going through here. I'm assuming this area is going to have the same vibe as up north. Low maintenance, yeah. cottage style. We talked about the swales here. I have that in an earlier sketch. Potentially two, but definitely one. A uphill of the orchard that we'll put in. Now, if you draw the swale like that, where it's lining up with the driveway, that is going to be swooping the opposite direction of the actual slope. Now I'm open to that because I like the visual of that, of it matching, but then yeah. the water would hit, hold on, before you draw that one, if you were to stick with the swale lining up with the driveway, the water's going to hit that highest point and then funnel to each of the dips on either side. So we would just want those to be large enough to accommodate the water hitting and mm -hmm. splitting. Yeah. Instead of if we just did a traditional swale, the water would run down the hill and just kind of catch evenly. I think it's probably a good idea to invert this. If we wanted a straight line of fruit trees here, we want them to get an even-ish amount of runoff. Mm -hmm. And if we have it hitting this point and going both ways and we need to have some sort of larger yeah, exactly. area to catch it, Planting it would be like a lot tree. of water over here, a lot of water over here, and not so much in the middle. So I think we should... Got a little too trigger happy with the undo. <laughs> it happens. If we... It doesn't even have to be that dramatic, but like something like this. And that actually gives a little opportunity for a nice perennial bed in yeah. here. It's just a nice view out their front door when they leave. They'll have this inward facing beautiful um, garden. Mm -hmm. And then we could have our fruit trees. That's probably too small for, depending on what kind of trees we do here. I do think we would probably want to do dwarf habit. I, and it would be okay. three, three, four max. I would be fine okay. with three. And then keeping everything else on the berm the same. So we won't touch that. We would um, want to landscape it because it doesn't look great right now. But there's no bobcat. There's no earthworks. So we'll just want drought tolerance on. Yeah. Are you thinking like drought tolerant ground covers or perennials? I'm thinking perennials. Okay. I think that's what they wanted this to be. I mean, I'll defer to your expertise if you have ideas, but that berms like this to me are where people put their showy landscaping, right? Yeah. So my thought is put showy landscaping. I mean, we could definitely do some blue carpet junipers and things to just fill in and stabilize so it doesn't have to be a hundred thousand perennials, but I would want some color through there too. I'd want some yeah. yarrow and some penstemons and so on. I'd have to look at street view again just to see exactly where these trees fall but I think we could work between them so I usually like to accent the corners mm -hmm. of things like the entryways so here and then maybe one big one in the middle and then if we have any filler ground covers they could just fill in these gaps yeah I'm going to so show you the street view they're already accent trees on the corners weeping cedars on both sides all right those are fun even yeah I think a perennial bed just in front of the one on the right that cedar is nice and then maybe some I say filler but but it's not our second thought. I think it'll still look nice. I think perennial beds pop more when they have some contrast with something else. If this yeah. were all filled out with the same types of perennials in a it's mix, a it would look pretty, but it would be a lot more planting than we probably need to do. And by doing some larger ground cover shrubs, they fill in those back spaces a lot more. So you can see the one cedar here and the one cedar here. There was, when we looked at Street View, basically where this little tuft of green is, is probably the only gap that's pretty significant. But because we're lining fruit trees up right here, I don't think we need to put another tree here. In fact, I think it might be too much. So I think let's just add perennials and maybe a couple of smaller woody shrubs like the woods roses. Although yeah. woods roses are a little higher water needs. So if we were to plant them, they would be lower in the swale. Or the um, backside of that berm where it catches the water maybe. Honestly, I would not hate that at all. 
just some woody shrubs on the back side of the berm to create a little bit of a backdrop for the perennials that are going to be street facing because then you're going to see just a little bit of height from that woody shrub that's planted on the back side of the berm and then these can just be drought tolerance planted on the front i like that and that creates that contrast that i was talking about too there's like a backdrop to the perennial bed where it's mm-hmm. the woods rose or another small mm-hmm. shrub as the back wall and then the showcase plants at the front. It also creates just a little bit of privacy. Right now it looks like you are looking right up to their front door across. Mm -hmm. They have a pretty big driveway and you can just see through it all. So it might be nice to have just a softer edge, but also a little bit of privacy. I guess those trees will also do that for them. The fruit trees across it are definitely going to be the primary source of blocked sight lines in the summer. And then the Mm -hmm. shrubs will fill in that lower area. I like the shrubs as really thinking about just the beautiful backdrop to those bermed perennials too just providing yeah. a little bit of back. Then you're not seeing a gorgeous flowering yarrow with driveway behind it. You're seeing a gorgeous flowering yarrow with some shrubbery behind it. I think we can cover the rest pretty quickly. I do want to show you what's in this bed up here. This is just showing the big empty space leading up to that side yard on the north side. This is all just needing to be full of something, something. There are some existing perennials over here that you can check out through Street View. There's definitely a creeping evergreen and then this weeping something something it's there it's doing fine it'll look great flowering in the spring i honestly think we can keep the existing evergreen shrubs too they're going to provide that mediterranean style structure and then we can fill in all the super soft herbaceous plants around it what do you think i like that i was just thinking that when we were looking at that view straight up to the fence on that north side of the house Mm -hmm. something vertical would look really good there it could just be another one of those spruce trees that we're doing in the back yard they have the room for it and another evergreen tree is a great way to use up space and create low maintenance areas to the right of where that second weeping tree is framing that edge of the house off that that corner of the house diagonal somewhere there it could even provide some privacy for that balcony up there and the path going into their backyard just filling that space with a nice evergreen would look good I i love the idea of a baby blue spruce or something it's not a huge amount of space but it will end up becoming a focal point that provides scale and context to this otherwise huge question mark of a space. If that baby blue spruce, which I just love just because the width is so manageable with that eight foot, sometimes nine foot diameter, if that was right in here somewhere and grew up to the 25, 30 feet tall, then that balcony becomes a much more pleasant place to hang out at that point. Yeah. You're so smart <laughs> thinking about the balcony. Because yeah, why would we want that to be in full view of the front yard and the busy street? We can yeah. hide that. I mean, it's set back enough. It might not be something they're thinking about now, but I know being on a patio with trees around you is much more comfortable than looking out at people walking down the street or cars going by. Yeah. It'll probably soften the road noise as well, since you said that's a main road. Looking at this picture, for example, I know if we do a spruce somewhere back here, it is going to provide some privacy and blocked sight lines. The further away we get from this fence, the less likely it's going to grow tall enough to really hide this. We have the space. Do we want to consider doing a larger variety? Yeah, I'm thinking maybe we do. Maybe we just commit to a big one. It's in the northeast aspect of the home, which is my favorite place to put evergreens. It fits the style they're going for. I don't really see a downside yet. So my only other thought was we could also do something columnar, like a skyrocket would fit really nicely here with a three foot yeah. diameter and it does get 25 feet tall. Yeah. And then that would, and it's skinny enough that it doesn't interfere with the gutter. It doesn't interfere with anything maybe both we'll do a skyrocket mm-hmm. here and then a, a big spruce or baby blue spruce whichever you decide in here somewhere let's look at douglas firs let's look at any native evergreen that you think would fill the space well and then provide some privacy to the backyard i think would be great i think that would look really nice the more privacy and way we can obscure the chain link the better though i was imagining you would be planting out shrubs and really tall stuff there anyway yeah i think that'll be a good opportunity for large shrubs in line with that existing fruit tree that we have there. Yeah. It would be large shrubs, tall evergreen, skyrocket in the back, and then everything else would probably be four or five feet and lower Yeah, as you get closer to the pathway. I don't like to crowd a pathway with really tall shrubs. Yeah. So having it transition down to shorter shrubs and maybe some perennial accents along that pathway that's going to loop around from the front to the backyard. I think that's working really well. That gives us a design strategy for that awkward space <laughs> where yeah. there's a lot of room, but 
but not a lot of maintenance desired for that. Yeah, as much as we would love to plant it out with perennials, it's not realistic or necessary. Perennial accents definitely just to give it some color, but you have full permission to just not fear size and scale with this. Yeah. Because yeah, we need to fill the space in a way that feels good and intentional. It's gonna make the front yard feel so cozy with fruit trees in the front. We already have big trees on the south. Framing the other side with some larger varieties. It's gonna make the house feel smaller in a good way because right mm -hmm. now it feels like this big house with this big extension of the original footprint that they've done that just sits on a flat surface and it makes yeah. it feel like ominous a little bit yeah, so if we frame it with some bigger up. plants it feels yeah. like it belongs there like it's cozy you are a million percent correct yeah there's that sky effect when you only see house rising up into the sky it looks I mean, you said it all already it's not a great vibe you want context you want the house to feel like it's fitting in with yeah. its surroundings i did find the picture of the other oh, ferns awesome. i think this tree's a goner so i think we need to plant a new accent okay, there yeah. anyway and there's no need for us to plant a high water needs plant at the top of a berm so we can just pull that guy out and then if we were to plant a tree or other focal point let's plant it on the inside of the berm yeah i feel like once that tree is removed too if they do stump removal that might flatten out the berm a little bit which might would be. be nice yeah it looks like it's overflowing onto the edge of their driveway <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. The berm thing kills me. It's like, why? There's no yeah. logic based in it at all. Let's plant things that need a lot of water at the point where no water can ever land. And that's why it's dead. Well, that one was probably lower water needs because it looks like it was an evergreen. It was planted so close to the road and so close to the yeah. driveway. Yeah, I mean, imagine around. being a cyclist trying to ride your bike here and just like getting hit in the face by a scratchy evergreen branch. So that really needs to go. The spruce is going to be way back here, right? I could see a mm -hmm. little bit tooth maple right there just being the cutest little bright red star of the show oh that would look so good against a blue spruce too right right oh my god i would die in the fall it looks so good i might push it a little bit north so it's not obstructing well it might not be so bad if it's in front of the window of the house i'm just looking at the alignment here i don't think that they'll mind having the block sight lines from the busy road honestly yeah i don't know what room is being used in that part of the house but i mean actually i think it's the garage so i don't know if it matters Oh, okay. I think that makes sense. And then we can stagger them. So it's like maple a little bit closer to the driveway. And then going back a bit, the larger evergreen that we'll put there mm -hmm. is pushed up north a little bit. So they cover more ground together mm -hmm. for blocking sight lines to the road and noise suppression too, because that's a huge thing for planting trees along a roadway. A million thousand percent. I want to talk about the trash cans really quick, if you, if you wouldn't mind sharing your screen. So right on the south side of the garage, where the the peninsula of landscaping juts out. Yeah. Directly west of where your mouse is now, like where the actual driveway is. That's where they store the trash cans right now. Just like kind of on the edge of the driveway there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What I was thinking, one, we want to have some sort of flat wall or something to just slightly obscure the trash cans for attractiveness reasons. But what I was thinking was exactly where you've written trash cans. Mm -hmm. You know how we talked about the path being pretty large format flagstone through yeah. the entire thing? What if the flagstone just gets bigger and wider where it almost becomes patio-like in the way that it fills up this space? Mm. In that I think they would appreciate being able to grab those trash cans and go straight to the street instead of having to do like a loop-de-loop -loop along their driveway. I like that. Yes, exactly. If it's just for trash bins, we don't even have to fill this whole space if we don't want to. Um, we could have a, we want perennial, it. a perennial border. Exactly. We could match the aesthetic that we have going up in this section of the driveway and just have a little one here. This could be probably a little bit wider. Exactly. That looks better than that. That would work. I'll measure this out to make sure there's room but we'll want there to be room for people to walk into this where it turns into this walkway here we'll need to think about how the trash cans would most reasonably be stored and then there needs to be enough room for a person reasonably to pull them out whip one around have one in front of them roll two trash cans down a patio mm -hmm. down to the street room to like turn them around these perennials might get in the way a little bit but i'll play with that and if they do then we can do all paving there that's not an issue yeah i think that would be really practical for them and and still look nice because it can connect 
you can actually see. You can see the trash cans in this picture. So okay, yeah. You can see where they are there. So I'm thinking there actually is an existing shrub here right now. So either that shrub comes out or we just paved this. I wanted some kind of wall or something to obscure the trash cans from the street, but mm -hmm. then you can't walk through. So maybe at that point, do we just not have the wall? So that way it's super easy for them just to drag them straight down to the street. For me, I'm not so bothered about seeing the bins from the street. If it were a place where the bins were sitting right by a front porch or something that the homeowner would be viewing them from and it might be an eyesore, then I would think about screening them. They probably have multiple cars in this driveway at a time. They have a basketball hoop. I don't think the bins, and they're kind of obstructed by that tree anyway, and they will be even more by the fruit trees in front yeah. of that. So I'm not personally bothered by it, but it's a preference thing. I think some people just might not like the look of that. I'm right next to their beautiful home. So if that's something that they brought up or if they show interest in that, then we can definitely do it. But I agree if we screen that area or we have a wall at that point, I don't think we would need the pavers because they would already have it, be having to pull them out around the wall a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then their momentum is taking them around that loop anyway. So I suppose um, it's not the end of the world to go this way. But if the trash cans existed as they currently exist, having this be flagstone would be kind of fabulous because then they could literally just grab them and yeah. pull them, which is yeah, nice. Yeah, and I think even seeing this, even the way I drew it, I think we have more space to work with, actually. They're going to have to go out where the driveway swings out anyway. It doesn't have to be like a straight path. It could be a little bit like you're merging the trash yeah. cans into the driveway yeah. as you go, which will open up some space to preserve that shrub if we don't want to get rid of it yeah. or open up more space for a planting bed. I think preserving the shrub and then planting around it would be great. Makes sense to me. I and think just... we can definitely make that work. For now, I'll show the path going straight out from where the bins are without a wall or anything. But if you want to chat with them about that, we can throw it out as an idea. I think without the wall is the most straightforward because there's still enough space right now that they could come out of their garage, walks right through here. This tree is not in the way because it's way it's somewhere else. Walk right through here and then just grab the bins and walk and they don't have to do any sort of spinny spinny. They can carry mm -hmm. two bins at the same time. It's really straightforward. I like that it. Sounds good to me. I think that'll work well. This is roughly how I redrew it. So there's still an access point here, but mm -hmm. it's more in line with where they're going. That's perfect. Um, and it just opens up this area a little I bit. Love it. I think it looks so good. If somebody were to park on the street to go to their house. This is the path they would end up taking to get to their front door most likely because they would walk straight this way. And so it's just a really nice way yeah. to give people choices as far as where they go to get to the most direct place without having to walk through plants. One other area, the area to the south of the basketball hoop, we want to keep some lawn, which makes this very straightforward <laughs> as far okay. as what goes where. They want to be able to have their dog hang out with them and sniff around if they're ever hanging out in the front yard. Definitely some lawn through there and then and just perennials where appropriate. Okay, well I think it would make sense since people will be running back and forth under the basketball hoop, it doesn't make sense to plant up next to that. Mm -hmm. So probably something like this for a lawn area. I was thinking um, bigger, like more to the oh, east. Okay. Like out this way too? Yeah, and maybe... Well, I guess we have this new driveway going in. So the furthest we could go is up here. I don't hate the idea of the lawn going right up against this driveway and against this driveway because realistically, if we were to plant perennial bed here or something, it would probably get walked over. Maybe not. If we put the right gaps in the right places, it would probably be fine. I think I am part to doing a little bit of a perennial border because the driveway takes up so much space. I really want to be conscious of curb appeal and having yeah. the driveway be framed really nicely with some pretty perennials. So I think giving... We did something like that to kind of... It's almost like a screen for people yeah. looking in. They don't just see like driveway lawn, like concrete lawn, concrete. There's something to break it up a little bit in here. We can even... Well, we could probably just do that. It's just mulch, so it doesn't need to be designed for sprinklers or anything necessarily. And we can also pull the perennials around the basketball hoop too. Like obviously let's give it some clearance, but there can still be some flowers to the... Like in here? Inside of the green that you just drew basically. Inside of the lawn central area? I'm just saying like if the shape ends 
ends up feeling too awkward where the grass is budding right up against that driveway up at the top. You still frame the grass area with some perennials. I kind of want a couple feet, probably just like two feet is probably fine for the basketball hoop. Also, this area creates a nice little framing for the front door. And then we could have this come up this way. And then it's more of a little grass nook for the pup. We'd still want an easy way to get on and off the lawn. So, because right now the only space I would see to step onto the grass would be the basketball hoop. Yeah, exactly. But I think that's amazing because then they could let the pup out the front door and like it's a direct path right onto the lawn, which I think is great. So it'd be that flagstone and just a couple going into the lawn area. And then the rest is driveway. And then the bed directly in front of the house is super straightforward because they are going to build a porch there. So we don't have to design anything. Awesome. That feels good. I'll probably refine these edges a little bit just because it feels like lawn, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yes, it's a little circular at this moment, but that's okay. We can definitely extend a little bit. I don't know. This perennial bed feels a little silly, but maybe... No, you might be right. Maybe it could just be the meadow, the lawn, and the basketball hoop could just be straight in that. They're not mowing it. Yeah, it really... could just be like yeah. a little more organic. That's and if they fun. wanted, they could plant some stuff directly in the lawn. If it's no mow, they could just... Maybe there are a couple of small flowering shrubs or something that could be... I think I'm, I'm with you. The ease of... Like you drew that little scale thing, which feels like five feet to me. So there's 10 for scale. So that's probably like 10 feet. feet. It's right off the front door. And if kids are, and dogs are like running out to play on the lawn, I think having them just go straight from the front door onto the grass makes the most functional sense. And if we did that, actually, I don't think we'd need these. Yeah. Because they're just walking right onto the lawn. So we could... Let's remove the... Yeah. Yep. Something like that. Remove the... Thinking. What? No, it has to be this way. Because they'll qualify for the turf buyback rebate. And if, if we do the turf buyback rebate, the lawn has to be central open shapes and they rejected having any steppers in the bio meadow even though technically oh. that totally works because it just breaks their rules how <laughs> you currently have it drawn totally works if okay. we were to have the pathway go through the lawn or have anything that made the lawn not this one efficient shape it would not work we would probably need yeah the basketball hoop to just get pulled into that landscaping bed yeah i was just gonna ask about that if they're gonna have an issue with the hoop at that point would they rather us have mulch <laughs> like, yeah. no plan Okay. I think if everything you're just coloring into green is a mulched landscaping bed and there'll be maybe some small shrubs, some perennials, it'll just continue to be mulch until the basketball hoop happens and then can be grass. It's connected to the planting area. Yeah. I don't know if I'm what I'm saying makes any sense. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> And I think if this is the plan to get the rebate and then over time, things might change a little bit or they might let the grass work its way into that space, then that's what happens. I'm realizing something. If it's grass, they don't technically need steppers at all. So it would still be a central open shape if we just remove that pink pathway altogether. Hmm. We would still want perennials up against the house because nobody likes lawn that just hits house, right? We need some flowers there. Let that be grass and they can walk straight across it to get to the driveway if they need. Okay, yeah, I like that. Simplifies it. So we would just have this be plant bed. And then probably on the the driveway side to the southern driveway. Like we don't need those perennials there. The only part that I want flowers is to flank the central driveway, which is for curb appeal. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's lawn now. Yeah. That feels simpler. That makes sense. Prettier. Yeah, it feels less busy. And this isn't one of their primary hangout spaces, it sounds like. It's probably not worth putting that much energy oh. into. There is a formal path through it, and there are formal perennial beds. Yeah. Um, I think this makes a lot of sense. They've got the porch. They can step right off of it. And then there's a lawn area right there. And then it connects. It hits the driveway. That's it. I would maybe plan in, just see that existing tree canopy on the southern side of the driveway. Just we'll tuck a couple shrubs wherever it feels scraggly and bare there just to fill in like south of the new driveway here yeah okay i think it's Uh, these are probably going to go so there might need to be something to fill in that section just giving framing for the whole property because i think it's a chain link fence and like an industrial situation on the other side i can't believe how good this whole thing looks and feels it feels good i think it feels super functional but also we have these pockets of just aesthetic and low maintenance and Yeah. yeah functional for people but also functional for the way water is going to move through densifying those corners it's great yeah. oh my god yeah i'm liking so it feels good okay thanks for spending the morning with me hopefully this was still an efficient use of your time because now you're in a really good spot for the conceptual yeah <laughs>